All right, shalom, shalom. Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Yosef. I want to come back to you with another wisdom lesson today. This time, going in on the seven things that the Most High hates. All right, so as it relates to our Heavenly Father, He's given us right ruling and right you know, guidelines to follow and instructions in the Torah and the Torah of wisdom. He's laid out things uh, of what's pleasing to Him and what's not pleasing to him and it's our job as we you know develop a greater relationship with our heavenly father to go in and see what is pleasing unto him and to do those things and to try not to do those things that will cause him to get into his anger and his rage and look at the examples of how he dealt with things in the scriptures all right so i want to share with you today seven things that the most High absolutely hates now for those of you that's been in the word and been in the scriptures a long time all right you've heard uh, about the seven things that y'all hate you you've heard about this plenty of times all right but there are a lot of people that's coming to this way that may have never heard this before and i want to be able to give you just a quick breakdown on the seven things that the most high hates all right so let's go to proverbs chapter six Proverbs chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse number 16. It says, These six things does the most high Yah hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. Number one, 17, a proud look and a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he does so of discord among the brethren. So if you find yourself in one of these seven categories, or if you find yourself in multiple of these seven categories, it's time to get back to the drawing board and make some changes. It's time to sit back and examine your life and to, and, and to seek the most high and to, and to put your face up to this unspotted mirror of wisdom and to be able to make the proper changes because you know that these things are offensive to the most high. You know that these things are things that can separate us from the kingdom of the Shamaim, all right, and we need to be taking you know checks up on ourselves so let's talk about some of these though for a quick second all right number one it says a proud look so what is a proud look a proud look is an individual you ever seen an individual that look down on people you know they got a little bit of money they got a little bit of success and you know they walk into a place as if everyone should serve them everyone should bow down to them you know just because they have a title or a position that every, people should be carrying their bags they should be carrying their briefcase all right they should be tending to them all right a proud look they look down on individuals it's an arrogant look and when you see it you will be able to identify it right there on the spot all right we have to make sure that we are not walking around in pride uh, we talked about that. If you go to uh, Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach chapter 10, I believe around 7 to 13, you see it, it talks about these scriptures about pride. All right, pride is hateful. But let's go to Proverbs 21 real quick. We'll talk about this proud look for a minute. These are seven things that we have to avoid. I'm telling you, these things can be detrimental, uh, you know, for us making it to the most high's presence in his kingdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 4, it says, A high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. A, a high look and a proud heart. So the high look, the facial expression, it comes from the heart first. A person has to be arrogant and prideful in their mind for it to express itself on their face. All right. A high look and a proud heart. All right. It's sin. It's sin in the most high. And it's not sin according to the first five books because we don't see a like, thou should not have pride in the first five books. But it is sin in the Torah of wisdom. We see what the definition of sin is. And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, you know, whosoever committed sin transgresses the law because sin is the transgression of the law. So pride is transgressing the laws of wisdom. All right, let's continue. So the first thing that the most High hates in this category of seven is a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. 
We have to stay away from individuals that have a lying tongue. All right, I, I've grew up with quite a few individuals uh, in my lifetime that you can you couldn't even believe what they were saying when they were actually telling the truth because they lied so much. And you know how many of you have felt the same way? I know if I was in front of you, you would be able to throw them hands up, right? You know, so we have to make sure that we are not you know operating in a lying tongue you know a person that tells lies they're trying to seek love they're trying to seek acceptance all right they're trying to fit in all right but not knowing that they are making an enemy with the most high and if you do believe the scriptures i know there's a vast increasing uh um, you know individuals that don't believe in the scriptures in today's world but those liars are going to have a part in the fire all right so it's real important that you do not come around with a lying tongue all right the next one it says and hands that said innocent blood are you an individual that want to go after individuals that are innocent because you hate them because you have an agenda all right because you want to see that individual's demise you know that starts in the heart as well you know wanting to see somebody go down so hands that said innocent blood all right, you see these individuals in the story of the Messiah. For those of you that do believe in Yahushua the Messiah, all right, who the world calls Jesus. All right, you will see that he was betrayed and he was shed. It was people that was running and they they had they, they put their hands together to shed innocent blood. When he stood up there, um, you know, and they said, what should we do? You're going to take... Barabbas you're going to take him and they said give us the thief give us Barabbas and he said while my hands is clean you know I don't find no fault in this man hands that shed innocent blood and they, they, they talked about you know putting sins upon us and our children you know sometimes you got to be careful what you say out here hands that shed innocent blood if you see an individual that's innocent or right, you want to keep your hands off of them keep your mouth off of individuals that are innocent that are walking trying to be blameless before the most high it's not your job to try to come and, and try to tear those individuals down all right and don't get around individuals that want to tear these people down because whether you know it or not that's going to rub off on you and then you're going to have problems with those individuals uh, or, or that individual all right so number one is a proud look number two is a lying tongue number three is hands that said innocent blood number four a heart that divides wicked imaginations you have individuals all right, when you go to the book of Proverbs earlier in the chapters, it talks about the, the, these wicked, um, you know, uh, individuals is out here plotting on, on people on a on continual basis. And he said they sleep not lest they cause someone to fall. All right, some individuals, they're up. There and some of these analytical people that, that are thinkers, you know, some of you thinkers, you know, it's good that you're thinkers. And then some sometimes if you are not being led by the most side, that thinking, the thing that could be your greatest asset could be your greatest detriment. Some people, their mind are, is devising wicked imaginations. They sit back and they think and think over and over again methodically on how they can take someone down. That goes back to innocent hands that shed innocent blood, but a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Stand at home, I understand all of us, we have wicked imaginations from time to time. All right, it talks about that in the book of Genesis, I believe chapter six, it talks about, you know, man's, um, the imaginations of man's heart will be continually evil, continuously evil. All right, so we have evil thoughts, all right? But it's some individuals that if an evil thought come, they, they will rebuke it. All right, they will speak scripture, they will speak the word of the Most High, and because they have his spirit, they don't have to dwell on that thought too long. But you have other individuals that they imagine wicked thoughts when they see a woman inside of a store. Yes, the women are beautiful, like whether you're married or not, the, the women, the Most High's base are very beautiful women. But you have some men that will look at the woman, and they will see her, and you know, they're just kind of, you know, send their eyes in another direction but you have other in men that they will literally go through the process in their mind of undressing her of taking down taking off her bra taking off her pants they will literally uh, devise wicked imaginations they will imagine themselves so that's why it talks about in um, Proverbs 6 and 25 to lust not after her beauty in your heart some people can literally as they're looking at a woman face to face they can literally be undressing that woman in their mind in their imaginations 
all right? And that's just a sexual act of emancipation. And some of the women, they do it too. They could be looking at a man face to face, and they could be literally inside of their mind imagining what they would do to that man right there as they're talking to him, all right? We got to put these, you know, thoughts in check, all right? We got to be submitting to the Ruach HaKadosh. You can't, you know, if, if you're a woman and you feel like a man is, you know, looks good or he's handsome. Let's continue. So now we talked about that, um, dem devising wicked imaginations and imaginations. And I just talked about the sexual perversions, but those wicked imaginations can go on and on and on. You talk about, uh, if you go back to the scriptures, uh, the lesson that I did about the law concerning sowing and reaping, you were so that you will see that individuals have devised, you know, pits for individuals, and he that diggeth for this shall fall therein so you can devise it in your heart you can have a heart that devises wicked imagination and that imagination can, can actually overtake you like the situation with Haman all right the Agadite the one that tried to take down Mordecai all right he had a he methodically put together a plan on how to not only kill Mordecai but to kill the children of Israel that were in their realm that region all right and he even went to prepare a gallow all right and the same gallow that he prepared actually was the one that killed him all right so you have to be prepared you have to watch out on devising these wicked imaginations next one feet that be swift to run to mischief all right how many of us we just can't wait to go run to some mischief we can't run we can't wait to go run and tell somebody about the latest gossip or what's happening on in the nation and you know we ready to get down there and be, and be mischievous all right you gotta make sure that that's not that spirit that you operate in you gotta make sure that that's not you i have to continually make sure that that's not me because there's something about this wicked flesh that makes us want to run to do mischief it's something about this wicked flesh that feeds on gossip that want to see somebody you know go through a downfall all right make sure that your feet are not quick to run to mischief mischievous activities and behaviors that you know that would not be in your best interest that you know that would not be lining up with the torah of wisdom and the torah of the first five books you have to really be careful about running to mischief all right as you roll, roll through the scriptures you could be able to see individuals that were hasty in their feet let's go to uh proverbs chapter 19 real quick proverbs chapter 19 um, and and it, it, this talks about this and lines up with it. Proverbs 19 and 2. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. So the person that's, you know, quick to run the mischief, the person that's moving all fast all the time, they might not be sinning according to the first five books, but according to the Torah of wisdom, you are breaking these laws. All right. And you have to stop doing it. So don't be quick to run to mischief. All right, sit back and ponder on those things. Proverbs 4 and 27, I believe that's the scripture I'm looking for. It said to ponder the path of your feet. You got to ponder the path of your feet, where your feet is going. All right, don't be so quick to run to, mis uh, to mischief. All right, you see, you see it right there in Proverbs chapter 4 and 26. It said, ponder the path of your feet and let all thy ways be established. You have to ponder. That ponder means to think to sit down and think about the past or what your feet is treading upon all right so let's go back to proverbs chapter six we talked about the first five all right we talked about a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood a heart that divides a wick of imaginations feet that be swift to run to mischief now we go back to number six a false witness that speaketh lies now when i talked about this and, and, and came across these scriptures years and years ago you know i would sit back and say think in my mind why would it say a lying tongue and why would it say a false witness those two are basically the same thing no they're not all right a false witness that speaketh lies a false witness can be in the form of a so as a so-called moray it could be a false prophet all right it could be in the form of any a prophet or prophetess or right? they could be false witnesses all right it said a false witness that speaketh lies 
or it ties together with lies. It could be one that's practicing divination. You see it continually every single Sunday morning or people telling you if you stand in this line and, and, and put a seed in your hand of uh, uh, 40 and $50 or get your best seed and you'll never be broke again and you broke the next day or two days later, all right, they practice divination. They are false witnesses that speak lies. These are things that the most I hate. They are diviners, all right, diviners. And the last one right here is that he that so of discord among the brethren. That is a very, that's a thing that's labeled the number seven. It completes the cycle of wickedness, the discord sower. The discord sower is one that causes problems between two individuals that are at peace. Two individuals that don't have no strife or contention with one another, but one individual, because of their feelings, because of their emotions, because of their agendas, they go and start whispering to this person about how this person is doing this. They go whisper to this other individual about how this person is doing that. The next thing you know, these two individuals that were pe living peaceable among each other, now they have strife and contention because of this wicked discourse sower. There was a discourse sower in the scriptures, a couple of them, but uh, a couple of notable ones I want to talk about is a man named Korah. Korah was violating the Torah of wisdom. All right. Korah went together and established 200. He got a, a group together of 250 of the most well-known men in the nation of Israel. And they came up against Moses and Aaron. And, you know, Moses, knowing that he's a man of the most high, all right, the most meek and humble man of the earth at that time, he puts out a challenge and he says, you know, we're going to see who the Most High is with. So the Most High, on behalf of Moses, all right, he kills Korah and the 250 men with him and allows the earth, the, the ground to come and suck them all in uh, all at one time. All because Korah was a discord sower, all right, and Discourse sowers, they, they're, they're not just okay with just being a discourse sower by themselves. They want to go ahead and, and bring more other people into that madness with them. All right, so because an individual may not be led by the Spirit of the Most High, they allow the discourse sower to take them down, down into the pit with them. Don't let that be you. Another man, Absalom, okay, your scriptures, King David, Dawid's son. All right, he stole the hearts and the minds of the people. When they would come by the gate, he would grab their hands, he would kiss them, he would act like he was humble, and he said, oh, if I was the judge, I would do right rulings, I would make the right decisions. He was planting seeds. The discourse sower is called a sower for a reason because they're planting seeds. Just came to me right now as I'm sharing it with you. The discourse sower is planting seeds, spiritual seeds of wickedness inside of the mind and the heart of the person that's listening to him. All right. So the discourse sower, he plants the seeds. All right. Absalom was planting the seeds of doubt. He was making all the people start to like him. So he became a counterfeit king for a minute. All right. And then at the end, he had to die the death of a counterfeit. All right. So the most I hate these things, I'm going to run through all seven of them one more time. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. These are seven things, along with the laws and the statutes and commandments in the Torah, the first five books, and with these wisdom commandments, laws that we that I've talked to you about on a regular basis, these seven things, they stand out because it says that these are things that the Most High hates. All right. And as you see, even with different sins, there are different sins in the scriptures in the Torah where the most high, he, he just will call it a sin. And then there are other things that are called an abominations and abominations are things that are detestable to the most high. He hates them. All right. And this is one of them. The discourse sower is an abomination to the most high. Some will say that all seven of these things are an abomination to the most high. So. With that said, 
But this video right here is a package you in any type of way that, that will help your spiritual growth. All right. If you if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button, click the bell button for notification. Share this video with as many individuals that you know that will be interested in learning about this hidden treasure. Until the next time we meet again, I say shalom, shalom, Yah Barak.